Hello everyone, this is Tech Remedy. Thank you for tuning in. Today we'll show you around the user interface of Visual Basic Development Environment in Visual Studio 2019. We'll go through the menus, the toolbox, and other small windows and available options in the UI. Stay tuned. Before we start, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel, like and share our video to help us keep on going. If you want us to go through a specific programming language or component related to Visual Studio 2019 or any other tech related subject, please let us know in the comments down below and we'll be more than glad to review it and do it for you. Once we land Visual Studio 2019, we'll see the main welcoming screen from which we can open all project by either selecting it from the recent list or by clicking on open a project or solution and of course we can start a new project as we saw in the previous videos since we already have a trial that we worked on previously we'll open that one and continue our tutorial with that project so guys this is the main user interface of visual basic development environment at the very top we have the main menu which will go through its main options in a while Right below it we have the famous toolbar from which we can open new project, save our project, add a new item, start our project in debug mode and so on. These toolbars are fully customizable. We can do that by right clicking at the empty space over there and then we can tick at the toolbar we want to view. We can also go to customize and then see all the available toolbars. We can tick or untick the toolbars that we desire to see or unsee in our user interface. We can also go to the menu bar, we can go to the extensions menu and fully customize everything you see in the user interface. On the left side by default you will have the toolbox from which you can drag and drop components to your user interface and then program them accordingly. The toolbox is preloaded with the default and main tools you would need to create your program. If you want you can include additional ActiveX libraries or .NET libraries to your project and then you'll have them ready to use even if you create a new project you'll have them listed over here for example let's try to add an OCX library to our project you can click anywhere in the toolbox and then click on choose items you'll see a new window the first tab is the .NET related libraries and the second tab is the none framework related libraries so if you add any library that is dotnet framework related it means that your program is now uh, related on dotnet framework and that dotnet framework version or any newer version is a must to have on the host computer for your program to run smoothly if you choose any of the com components or the non framework related libraries then you do not have to install the framework on the host computer and your software is not related to that framework so if we try to add an OCX library which is a non framework related we'll go to the com components tab click on browse navigate to our file select it and hit open we'll see that uh, Visual Studio listed that new component for us in the com components items list you can check whatever library you want to add to your project from here. If they are not listed here, you can look for the library file if you have it by clicking on browse. And after that, make sure to tick this one here and then click OK. Visual Studio will add that component to your toolbox. And from there, you can drag and drop it to your user interface to have it added to your program. This is Microsoft FlexGrid added to our program. And once we add any library from here that is not the default uh, controller uh, of Visual Studio, Visual Studio will automatically include ActiveX libraries and DLL libraries related to this controller to your references list. We'll come to that one in a minute. At the bottom we have another window. It contains the debug information, search information, errors, warnings, and messages list based on the built and the IntelliSense of Visual Studio 2019. As I told you earlier, everything in the user interface 
whether it is a small window, whether it is a section, whether it is a toolbar, they are fully customizable and configurable and they all can be changed as you like and as you want them to be. Right above that we have the non-UI items, they are all added there. Those items are like timers, communication, components, background workers, etc. Anything that is not related to the user interface or that does not need to appear as an item to the end user, they are added uh, in this section. For example, if we add another timer to our project, even if we place the timer in the middle of our UI, the timer will jump directly to the bottom. And once we click on that one, the properties window, which we'll come to in a while, will show us the um, initial settings and initial uh, configurations for that controller over there. We can program it, we can change it as we like, we can then trigger it by a uh, button or by a menu or by a specific condition and that would be later on discussed uh, with you. On the right side we have two main sections in Visual Basic. The top one is the Solution Explorer at which we can see all our files, the icons, the forms, uh, the reference list, everything that is linked to our program is set and written over there. And please pay attention to the word linked and not added because some of the libraries here are only linked to our program. They are not added to our program file. Um, if we want to add them, we'll need to select each and every one and then make sure to have the copy local set to true to have that library copied to our program uh, folder and then given to the end user after compiling and finishing the program. That would make our program less dependent on the PC, less dependent on the operating system and has less uh, prerequisite applications or libraries to be added to the whole system. So for example let's try changing every library to local. Before that let me show you the uh, uh, folder which contains our program. We can access that one by either navigating to the save location or by right clicking at our project open folder in file explorer go to bin debug and then you'll see our program over here. Now as you can see the program has only four files they are the XML designer, the AXE configuration file and the AXE itself and then the debug file. After changing everything to copy local equals to true we will right click on our project hit rebuild and then see uh, difference in file listing. You can see now our program has all the DLL files included in our folder and that would make our program as I told you less dependent on the PC, the host and on the operating system that this program would run in the future. On the right bottom side we have the properties window, a dynamic window that changes based on the selected component. From this window we can change the component name which is a move that we must do as I told you before to have a professional program. If you have missed that episode please make sure to check it from the link given on the screen. Other than the object name of course the visual parts of Visual Studio can all be arranged from this window. A small trick for you, all the annotations used in this window are quite similar to the annotations used in the programming section. So you may explore the available option that you can change on each object Select the ones that you want to make dynamic during your program and use the name given in the properties list in your programming code so that you can start tweaking that property programmatically during the runtime. Another important window in our user interface is the events window which is the thunder icon next to the properties list. Once we click on that one we can see a list of events related to the selected component. Since now we have selected the form itself those are the events for the form itself. So we already have something that is created for the load event of the form. So once the form is loaded, it will perform that specific coding. Each component or controller has different events, but they all provide so many options that you would rarely be forced to create your own event to run a command set. So let's try to add a button. This is our button. 
You can see here the list of events related to this button. Of course, the default and logical one is the click event. So once the button is clicked, it will perform a set of code related to the click event. So uh, whenever you want to add code to any of those uh, events, simply double click on that event to open the code side of that and then start adding your sentences under its title. The main event of each controller or object is activated by double clicking on that object in the design window. So for the button, the main event is a click. So if we double click on the button, it will take us to the click event of that button. And if we go back to our designer, we can see that click event has a function now linked to it. So let's say that our button is, um, let's just change some of the properties. Let's make the font bigger, font family to Calibri and make it bold make the text color red and make the background color yellow for example we want to change the uh, font of the button whenever the mouse is waved over it to green so we go back to our events list we scroll down we see that mouse hover is empty we double click on that one and then visual basic creates an event for us in that uh, particular event for that particular controller so we go back here we change the name of course of the item to any name you want it i'll call it btn color change so btn color change dot we want to change the background color of course so we say background color is equal to color dot green so let's run our program and see how it looks like this is our splash screen and this is our program so what we created here is whenever the mouse moves over the button the background color will change to green so watch carefully the color changed to green as you can see the text color is not matching we can change the text color along with that one so let's try doing that one really quick button color change dot for color of course if you do not know the property name you can simply go back to the component go back to the properties list that was the font color we changed to red so it's called for color this is a trick I told you about guys a while ago so let's apply it directly for color equal to color dot white for example run our program and that's our main program so once we move the mouse over here the color changes to green the background color and the text color changes to white the only problem is when we move the mouse out of our button, it does not go back to its original state and that's just because we have not told Visual Basic to do so. So let's try doing that one as well. We go back to our events list and then look for something related to the mouse cursor leaving our uh, controller. So we scroll down to mouse and we see there is something called mouse leave so if we double click on that one in the same manner visual studio or visual basic will create the uh, code header for us we want to change the same code so we copy those paste them here and change them to the original uh, settings sorry the background was yellow and the four color was red we run a program Let's try our app. That is the button. The background is yellow and the text font color is red. We move our mouse over it. It's changed to green and the text to white. We move our mouse out of it. It's changed back to yellow and the text to red. So if we go back to the main menu of the program, 
uh, we have file from which we can open your project add something to our project close the solution save it and then uh, open one of the recent files or exit the program edit is the regular edit Just the copy paste select all bookmark uh, view we can view the solution explorer if we close any of the windows we see here in front of us accidentally we can reopen them uh, from this menu this is the tab order we'll come to that one in a separated video uh, stay tuned for that uh, the project as I told you we can add uh, we can check the pro project properties from this which is uh, one of the main things that you need to do for each and every project you create we can connect our project to github to any you get packages to get packages from external links we can add windows forms from here we can add new items from here we can add references libraries all from here if we do not want to right click on the project in the solution explorer side the build menu has the build solution rebuild clean uh, or run the project in a specific manner or specific debug mode we can change the debug modes from the debug menu of course uh, format it to tell us how to format the uh, components we have for example if you select those components and we make we want to make them in the same level we click on format align align to the top so it brings this component down so that it is in the same level with this component other than that we have test if we want to test our program under specific condition analyze we can do a code cleanup run code analysis and so on from tools menu we can see any other external tool or add-on installed to our project or to visual studio 2019 as we can see here I have dev express installed and I have a package for multi-language support installed from here we can also connect to a database SQL server and other external tools after that I'll come to options uh, in a while um, extensions we have the extensions manager over here window we have the, all the opened window we can uh, close them hide them open them and so on help is just to access the help uh, built-in help or the online help of visual studio check if the project is registered and see the uh, version of your microsoft visual studio from here if we go to tools options there is an option that you might need to do uh, before start programming or while programming because it will help you a lot you go to as i told you tools options text editor all languages general you open word wrap and you open the uh, visual arrow to show that there is a word wrap and you tick on line uh, numbers from this you can see here that i have line numbers over here and if the line is too long let me show you what the word wrap means so what it does is it wraps all the words to fit in the same window it shows you a small arrow here that this line continues and the line number stops counting until the actual line is ended so that's the word wrap if we do not have it then the line would go on behind the scroll and we might not see it uh, the search is very intelligent from here you can write let's say uh, line number and then it shows you that in the text editor all languages general there is line number you can turn it on or off from here it takes you directly to the settings and to the correct location where you can tick uh, to show or hide the line numbers that's all for this video guys let me know in the comments down below if you want us to add any other thing or if you want us to talk about something that we might have missed never forget to thumb up the video like and share among your friends and of course subscribe to our channel to always get the latest videos that was the tech remedy thank you for tuning in and we'll catch up in the next video see ya